In this video, we're going to continue our lecture of the basic concepts of graph theory from part two. Our next definition is that a graph is said to be connected if you could move from each vertex on the graph to any other vertex of the graph along its edges. Consider this example. We are asked whether this graph is connected or disconnected. And if it's disconnected, we need to identify exactly how many connected components it has. Consider the two vertices that I've highlighted. Is there a way to get from this vertex to this vertex only going along the edges of the graph? In this case, the answer is yes, because we could go, for instance, along this edge, and then this edge, and we're at that vertex. Alternatively, we could go from this edge and in a less direct path still end up there. But for the definition to be connected, it's not just any two, but it is each vertex to every other. So this must hold for any pairs of vertices you pick. So now let's consider, could we get from this vertex to this vertex? Take a minute to look at the graph and think about that. If we try to, we might first start coming through this vertex and then here, but then we see there's no edge that connects these two. So instead, maybe we come down. And at this point, we've got back in a circuit. We would just keep repeating the same path. The reason for this is that this graph is disconnected. There is no path of edges that are shown in this graph that would take us from this vertex to this vertex. And specifically, we could see that we've got different connected components to this graph. What I'm tracing out these edges along with these vertices makes one connected component. So imagine that we are pulling the different connected components apart because within graphs you could remember move things so long as you're not deleting edges or vertices or connections. So imagine we move this piece over here. What that leaves is these remaining pieces. If we went from this vertex to this vertex, we see there's no other connections except these themselves. So let's also separate that piece. Okay, That just leaves this remaining section of the graph that is connected to itself, not to the whole entity. So this graph here is isomorphic to this graph because all we've done is we've kind of separated the overlapping graphs or the overlapping edges and lines, but we have not changed any of the vertices or edges or connections between them. So you can easily see how we could go from this arrangement back to this arrangement. Just bring this section over here, bring this here, and they'd all be drawn over each other. So this graph is considered to be disconnected because we cannot get from any vertex to any other vertex as part of the graph, and it's isomorphic to a larger graph where we can clearly see why it's disconnected. The reason it might be helpful to think in this context is now we can clearly see there's no connection between them, but whenever these are drawn on top of each other, it's harder to see whether these crossings are connections or not. So that's one way you can determine if something's connected or disconnected. Before we get to our next example, we do need to introduce three more definitions. We have the idea that a walk in a graph is a sequence of vertices. So all this means is a walk, you can imagine starting at one vertice and walking along the edges to other vertices so pretty much you're not, you're going to be going along the, uh, you're not falling off the edge of the graph. So you're going through allowed vertices. Okay. A path builds on the idea of a walk because it says you have to first be a walk. So that means you have to go 
go through allowable edges of the graph. And then the additional criteria is that no edge is used more than once. So once you've used an edge, you can't come back and use it again. Now a circuit is an even stronger definition. A circuit, first of all, is a path. So a circuit inherits the idea of a path, and then a path inherits the idea of a walk. But in addition, a circuit is not only a path, so it's a walk that uses no edge more than once, but in addition to that, it must begin and end at the same vertex. So wherever you start, you've got to get back to the same place by using the allowable edges of the graph and not using an edge more than once to be a circuit. To help you remember these, I would just think of a walk for a graph. You've got different edges described. All a walk is is that you're going through allowable edges. You're not walking off the graph. A path then says you can go along the edges, but just make sure you don't backtrack, only use edges once. And then a circuit is just a path, so it means you're going through allowable edges, you're not reusing edges, and you've got to begin and end in the same place. So based on these definitions, we are going to look at a given graph and identify whether sequences of edges that are listed out are walks, paths, circuits. So we've got a graph drawn here, and we've got sequences. So here, E is said to be the vertice E. That's what it means. And then by the arrow, it says, then go to C. Okay. So we would find vertice C. And we would say, okay, can we go to C? There is no edge between E and C. So this would have us kind of walking off the edge of the map, or sorry, the graph. So this is not a walk because it's asking you to go in a direction where we don't have an edge connecting them. So this is not a walk. And because it's not a walk, it can't be a path because a path has to be a walk. And because it can't be a path, it can't be a circuit because a circuit must be a path. So it's kind of if the walk fails, all the other ones fail as well. So it's not a walk, which means it's not a path. Not being a path means it definitely can't be a circuit. And since we've already, the first sequence failed being a walk, we don't need to consider the later sequences. Next, let's look at two. So it says start at A, then go to C, then to D, then go to E, B, and then A. So first, to consider if it's a walk, let's just see, can you actually go from these vertices to the next vertices along edges of the graph? So we would start at A, and then we could go directly to C. There is an edge between A and C. Then we ask ourselves, can we go from C, it says, go to D. There is an edge between C and D, so we can go directly to D. D then takes us directly to E. There is an edge between them, so we could go from D to E. E then takes us to B. And then B takes us to A, and there is an edge between them. So this is a walk because as we went through this sequence, we only went through edges of the graph. So I would say it's a walk. Now, some sequences of vertices can be more than one thing. I would say it's also a path because we never use the same edge twice. We didn't go over the same edge, so it's also a path. Now, once you're a path, remember that the next step is being a circuit, and the only thing a circuit adds to the definition of path is that you begin and end in the same place. So since we started at A, and then we ended at A, we are a path because we didn't repeat, and then we're a circuit because we started and ended in the same place and we were already a path. So this is all three. It is a walk, path, or a circuit, or and a circuit. I recommend you take a minute to identify which of the three labelings apply to problem three and four. So pause the video and then unpause when you're done thinking about these. Okay. 
Looking at three, we first check if it's a walk. Does it go along allowable edges? It says start at B and then go to D. Now there is an edge connecting B and D, so that does work. Once we're at D, it says go to E. Looking at the graph, D and E are connected, so we can walk along this edge. Once we're at E, go to B. E and B are connected by this edge. Once at B, go to C. B and C are connected by this edge. So this went through all allowable edges of the graph. So this is a walk. Now we ask ourselves, is it a path? So as we went along that sequence, did we ever repeat edges? And I would say, no, we didn't. We went through all distinct edges only once here. So this is also a path. Now it's not a circuit. And one way you can clearly see it's not a circuit is it begins and ends at a different place. In order for something to be a circuit, it must end and begin at the same vertex. So we could say it's a walk and a path, but it is not a circuit. Now for the fourth example, we've got a sequence that starts at A and then it goes to B, so we could go along this edge of the graph. Once at B, it goes to C. B and C are connected by this edge. Once at C, it goes to D, which is along this edge. D to B. And then B to A. Now, I've already gone from A to B and use this edge, so to go from B to A, I'm going to be using this again. So I cross back over that same edge. So first of all, it does go through only allowable edges, so it is a walk. But it is not going to be a path because it used this edge twice. It used it once on the way out and then once again on the way back. So because of that, it's not a path. And if something's not a path, it's automatically not a circuit. Because by definition, a circuit